Hello everyone, Commando X here again, and this time is Zombie Apocalypse 3, Weapons and Tactics 3, Melee Weapons, and Backup Weapons. But before I start, I want to thank everyone who's checked out my site, and those that were very supportive, okay? And this goes out also to Project Jewu. Check out his video, his site, uh, Zombie Apocalypse, Liberal Weapons of Choice, all right? God bless you, Jay. Thanks. And to the Master Blaster, and to the Rip Ripper, 7576. You guys are awesome. All right? Okay, let's get into the my weapons of choice for melee and backup weapons. All right? Every zombie fighter out there carry at least two backup weapons that are melee weapons, okay? The ones that cause blunt trauma or the ones that have to slash or a backup firearm, all right? I'm going to get into a couple of them. This is a Bukri style bolo machete right, with an angle head. You got two types, one with the straight blade and the one with the angle, all right? doesn't matter. These machetes are very effective. I prefer the curved blade because the curved blade has been used by the Bukri warriors for hundreds of years, and the curved blade is designed to cleave a human skull in half, all right? Instant death for a zombie. All right, that's why I prefer it. Another one is a survival shovel. This little bad boy here, due to its small size, all right, as a shovel, you can cleave a, a, a skull in half with no problem. And another plus thing about this bad boy, it's also a pickaxe. All right, it's lightweight. It's durable stainless steel. It's portable, it's lightweight. I recommend you get one. For medieval weapons, nothing beats this mace here. Okay? This bad boy got seven spikes designed to smash your head in. Like I said, for melee weapons, I say carry two. It could be two, you can carry one of these and a trench knife, this and a machete, two machetes, two of these makes no difference. Just have two and be proficient with them. All right? This here is a modern day version of the trench knife. It's got brass knuckles, you know, a nice blade to it, serrated right over here. And you can hammer a zombie, but unfortunately it's not as awesome as his predecessors, which had a spike or a stud, which designed, which allows greater penetration. All right? The times have changed, I guess. This is a World War I 1917 trench knife. Beautiful spike, got a good edge on it, nice little stud for smashing skulls, and nice little knuckle duster, all right? This is nice, it's gorgeous, it's reliable. I personally prefer this over the previous one I just shown. And this is my all-time favorite, the 1918 trench knife. Spike, pointed stud, brass knuckles. I personally would carry two of these right, as a backup melee weapon. Now this gruesome bad boy over here is a trench knife with a nice pommel and a bob, you know, for smashing skulls. But this thing has an axe blade for cleaving a skull or decapitating somebody. This is downright evil for a zombie, but this is downright perfect for you. If you can find one, get one. This is a knuckle duster with an axe blade, all right? Other things I wanted to point out, for those who live in countries with gun restrictions, remember that you're never unarmed if you've got your, you got your open mind about things. You can always get weapons at a sports store. You can always get weapons at a hardware store, and you always can get weapons out of a you know out of a farm. Uh, sickles, scythes, baseball bats, uh, hockey sticks, right? Lead pipes, two by fours, and you always can use them as your immediate weapon, so you can get your hands on some military hardware off a zombified soldier or a zombified police officer. They won't be needing it. Put them out of their misery 
and take their shit and happy hunt. All right? Now, for backup weapons, I'm going to give you three choices right here. All right? For backup sidearms, this here is the Taurus PT-24-7 Pro. All right? It's got a tack light on it. Can't go wrong with it. This is 45, 12-round mag, one in the chamber. It's a 45, right? Can't argue with the power. Now, if you really want to use them, do some cruel and unusual punishment on a zombie, this here is a old-school classic, a 44 mag. All right, that's for them big zombies that you think your 45 can't take down. 44, hand can. Need I say more? All right. And this one is my one of my personal little favorites is a uh, they call it the AR-7 survival rifle. This will be also known as the Mafia's way of uh, pest control. It's a weapon system that's easy, convenient, and you put together with no problem. All right. Said it's easy. Pop them. Screw this bad boy at the base. Has a 22 mag in it. Put the plate back on. All right. Look at it, go up. Eight round mag, one in the chamber, 22 caliber, beautiful sight, set out up to 50 yards, nice little semi auto, convenient carry. This is a nice backup weapon, you know? Of course, you know, putting it together would be a lot faster, but this right here, or you could just have it already out. And just have it, this is lightweight. I'm not, I'm not lying to you, it's not even two pounds, right? Sweet, reliable, accurate. That's what counts. All right? And this is so far what I recommend for melee and backup weapons. However, if you feel that you uh, want to bring martial art weapons, that's fine. But martial art weapons do need a lot of practice. Okay? Everything from nunchucks to those hook swords, samurai swords, the Najinata, even medieval weapons, you know, pikes, halberds, and they're long weapons, they need consistent practice, and they're only good for outside. These weapons I've shown you are good for outside and close range when you want to do room sweeping. All right? For now, you guys, it's all for now. You guys take care. Thank you so much for your support. All right? It's Commando X signing out. Take care. God bless. Thank you.